Good morning and welcome to Online Church here at Sharon United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pete Harris and I greet you in the wonderful name of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be unto you. You might notice that uh, we keep changing locations. Today we're coming to you from our sanctuary. It's early December and early December in Manchester and early December at Sharon Church means... There's a craft show going on. And so our usual location now for worship, uh, we've been booted out, and it's great. We're back to the sanctuary. Hey, if you haven't been to our website, look right there, SharonUMChurch.org, and there you can find all kinds of information about our ministry and our mission, some of the things that God has us doing. And we would love for you to uh, check it out. Let us know you uh, are interested in something or you saw something there that particularly uh, intrigued you. Uh, I think back up here there will be a drop-down menu for our prayer ministry every week. Uh, during the week, uh, we have people praying, but especially a small group of dedicated folks who take all of the prayers that are offered up during the week and through our worship time and they lift them up before the Lord. And we want your prayer to be part of that effort. And so if you'll just submit that prayer request, it comes right to one of our uh, leaders of our prayer ministry, and, and we'll lift it up. Uh, also, uh, I think over here, there will be a place for you to uh, investigate how to give an offering. Offerings uh, help the church. It helps the mission go forward, and we're thankful for everyone who's able to give in a safe, secure way. The most, uh, one of the more exciting things that's happening is this Wednesday, December 8th, we have another food packing event. 10,000 more meals we're going to pack for, to send down to Haiti. Uh, and if, you want, if you're in the area, we want you to be part of that effort. If you go to the website, and maybe uh, you'll see a place where you can, um, here on this broadcast, you can find a place to direct link. The description's down below, and so uh, we're grateful. If you want to be part of that, come. Come be part of, of doing good works in the name of the Lord. It, it'll be a good time. There'll be plenty of folks there. It's a real easy process. It's great for kids, as well as for, well, older people like me. I hope today is a, a blessed day for you. I'm so grateful we're here in worship together. And now, friends, grab your Bible if you don't have it. Let's go. Uh, we're going to enter into worship, and it begins with our call to worship. It, it, Shirley Dish, one of our leaders here, she comes and she's reading from the prophet Hosea. A reading from the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. Sow righteousness for yourselves, reap the fruits of unfailing love, and break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, until he comes and showers his righteousness on you. But you have planted wickedness, you have reaped evil, you have eaten the fruits of deception, because you have depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. Thank you, Shirley, for that reading from the prophet Hosea. And now, friends, listen to this wonderful hymn of Advent in this time of preparation. Come, thou long expected Jesus.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, in our mouths, reveal among us the light of your presence that we hold your and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be in glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high on us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence, our ears to hear your living word. Strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice. Amen and amen. If you have your Bible, come with me. We have the first is from John's Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the fourth gospel. And we're in the 14th chapter. And we're reading verses 18 through uh, 18 and 19, reading uh, verses 25 through 27. Listen for the word of the Lord. Jesus is speaking to his Disciples, this is part of the farewell discourse from the upper room. And he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I will live. And then at verse 25, he picks up all this I've spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do And then our second reading comes to us from the last book, of the Bible, John's writing, the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John. We're right near the end, chapter 21. And here's what's written. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. First earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling is with people, and God will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. No more mourning, no more crying, no more pain, for the old order of things has passed away. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. We find ourselves here at the second Sunday of Advent as we're moving closer and closer to the celebration of Christ's birth. And our series during Advent is uh, kind of summarized with the one word, awake, or awaken. Last week we heard about awakening to uh, hope. Today it's a call to awake to peace. And so it was that last week I began the series by asking the simple question, what time is it? The calendar the calendar, when I look at my calendar, it tells me what's important in my life. In fact, if I look at my calendar, I can actually see what the priorities of my life are all about. How to the clock, though, the clock tells me that which is urgent. What am I doing today, right now? The clock pushes me from one moment to another to another moment of need that I have to address and then back to something else that needs my immediate attention. I 
calendar tells me of my priorities and what's important. A clock tells me what is urgent. But last week, we took a brief look at uh, part of our reading. I want to hold it up before us again. It's Romans uh, chapter 13, verse 11. Here's how Eugene Peterson, in his translation, the message, expresses Paul's words. Make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day obligations that you lose track of what time it is and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work He began when we first believed. There are times when the day-to-day obligations exhaust my spirit and exhaust my energy. Days when the news is so horrible and tragic, so full of pain and injury, that I just lose track of time. Well, lose track of time as the Bible speaks of it, and we'll get to that. This week, we had the tragic news of a school shooting. Not here, but here in Michigan. Many victims. I'm exhausted. I need Advent. I need need a calling back. I need to be awakened once more to the purpose and to the power and to the presence of the living God. Friends, Advent is a time, a season of great awakening. And So last week we looked at how we are called to awake to the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. And now on this second Sunday of Advent, we're called to awake to peace. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus in the second chapter, For Christ himself is our peace. He destroyed the barrier that is between us and God and between us and our neighbor. He came and preached peace, Paul writes, to those who are far off and peace to those who are nearby. Christ came to bring peace, but it's peace unlike anything this old world can give or or know of what makes for peace, as he said in the Gospel reading. For the peace that Christ comes to give is the very assurance of His loving presence. Hostility may continue, violence may still ravage the young and the old alike, disease, cancer, abuse, mistreatment, persecution, victimizations of of so many varieties of this old world. But he comes to give us peace. Do any of these ways of of brokenness that we see, that we experience in the world, do any of it that breaks our communities, any of this brokenness we know in our families, even within our own lives. Does any of this sever, cut us off from the promise of God, from the claim that God has upon us, from the connection we have with the living God? Through His all-encompassing love found in Jesus Christ, Can anything come between us and God's love in Jesus? And Paul says in Romans 8, no, nothing. Advent. Advent's a time of waiting. It's an an invitation to let the spark of hope and peace be, be rekindled in our waiting hearts and in our minds to awaken us again to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ like like maybe we've never imagined possible, especially in in a Sunday following a school shooting. Grace to experience the deeper attachment to God. Love that helps us discover our true selves. You know, that identity that we have in Christ, an identity that's been redeemed. We've been set free by His love. Grace to seek peace for our lives. 
to receive peace and work for peace in our families, to be reconcilers, to seek peace in our community. In the darkness all about, and even God is at work. He's beginning and continuing. He's birthing and, and growing. Something's unfolding. There's this engaging story of Jesus. It began long, long ago, and it continues today. And, and there's a day coming when it will be made complete. It'll be consummated in history. It'll be concluded in that great day of his second appearing. When it comes to time, we live between two advents. There was the first one where he was born of Mary. He was given the name Emmanuel. And the second of his return with angels at his command. At the first, at the first coming, few notice. At his second, all peoples, all of creation herself will notice. He came as the Prince of Peace, and then He'll come as the King of Glory. Max Lucado, writing in one of his books, says, what will happen next, and, and what we hope for, what God has promised, a new heaven, a new earth, justice reigns. The dwelling of God is with all, all people. See, God has, has moved from heaven right into the neighborhood. God making his home right here with men and women. They are. He is their God. And he'll wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death gone forever. Tears, crying gone. Pain gone. Grief gone. Everything of the old all gone. For something new is coming. The old order of things, gone. One commentator writes of these old order things. We can find them listed throughout John's revelation. The blasphemy of human arrogance, the rebellion within us against God, the empire's violent opposition to the people of God, the power of evil to deceive nations, the faithless compromise of the churches. All and everything, all and everything that's brought woe and wrath upon the earth. These old order things in the second advent, when he appears, when there's a new Jerusalem coming down, all of it, all of it, and gone for good. For peace will come to those who are far off, and peace will come to those who are near. For where the Lord is, there is peace. Present to the Lord's presence, we know, we acknowledge, we experience His compassion and His mercy, His joy and His love. And so Max Locato writes, history is not an endless succession of meaningless circles, but a directed movement toward a great event. God has a timeline, and because of Bethlehem, we have an idea where we stand on it. We refuse to believe that this present world is the sum total of all existence. We celebrate the first advent to whet our appetites for the second. We remember the first. We long for the second. What did Paul write? The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night's about over. The, the dawn is about to break. Be up. Be awake to what God is doing. God's putting the finishing touches on, on the salvation work He began when we first believed. In our Advent study this year, we're working through a book with J.D. Walt of Seedbed.com, and he speaks about one of the things he's, he's really focusing on here at the beginning of the new year, here at the beginning of Advent, is how the Bible speaks about time and and 
The Bible speaks about it in two, different, two distinct ways. One is chronos, chronos time, chronology, right? This is the, the time that you measure through with clocks and calendars. All of history is measured this way, right? We have, we have that B.C. time, before Christ. We have the E, which is not after death, but uh, Anno Domini. It means in the year of... Time. It, it measures the first advent through, through the, the words of prophets, through angelic pronouncements, through Mary's song. There's a second kind of time, though, that, that the Bible speaks of, and this is kairos. Kairos. The word means when the time is right, when it's most opportune. What it, Kairos time is, is the moments when when God breaks in. And so Paul, writing in Galatians 4, speaks of this kairos time. When the time had fully come, when the time was most opportune, when the time was right, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. When the time had fully come, God sent His Son, yes, born of Mary, the same who suffered under Pontius Pilate, the same who was crucified, died, and buried. Third time, on the third day, the third day, Kronos time, we're measuring it three days later, what happened? Kairos time, he rose from the dead. Within Kairos time, God acts. The first advent. In the middle of all time, today, God is acting. And in the second advent, he brings to completion, full completion, the Kairos time. So let me offer to uh, an illustration. I brought some props with me today. We talk about Kairos time. This is how we measure it. But in fact, the Bible speaks of this as well, Paul says, this is the evil age. I've I got a note here. i got to look at my note real quick, right? And so, uh, grace and peace to you, he writes to the church in Galatia. Grace and peace to you. But then he goes on to say, this is uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present age. See, in the Bible, this present age is, is evil. It's evil. It's filled with all of the ways in which this old world thinks it knows something about peace, and yet knows nothing. It's unable to give it. Think about it. I don't know about you, but this week, this evil age seemed to rear up and it's not just a school shooting in, in Oxford, Michigan. I had a conversation with a 28-year-old young lady, single mom, three-year-old. Her three-year-old has special needs, and she's wondering who can help her. And what she's longing for is peace. Peace, that peace that, that passes all human understanding, that peace that comes and says it's a difficult day, something's, this is hard, and it'll be okay. That peace that, that answers deep, deep questions. Am I mom enough for my kid? I think of a father that I spoke with this week who finally admitted he's been struggling with depression because it's hard. He's got a teenager, and he's got young ones, and he's a single dad, and it's hard. And he wonders who will help him, and he wonders if he has enough strength, and he wonders about school shootings when his own son is off to school. He sees the evil of media and the news and wonders what kind of world it is for his children. And he longs for peace. This old evil age, 
church. It's marked by Kronos time. But I want to talk about something else. There's another time, right? We're talking about this Kairos time, and, and in Revelation, it's the, the coming of the kingdom, right? We have, we have this old evil world, and then we have, we have this new thing that God is doing. He's breaking in. J.D. Wall talks about these two times coming together. It began long ago, if I can do this without... And God broke in. God broke in. And God broke into the world in a very special way through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's where we find ourselves. Here, here in the middle. We are living in the middle of this. Jesus has died and Jesus has risen from the dead. And he comes to offer us peace. For he comes to offer us his very loving presence. In the middle of these two circles is where we live. Oh, this old world is away and this new world is coming, but it's not yet here. We live between the two advents. And we live in this middle time. This time when we need peace. And the way we find it, we find it in Jesus. Peace I give to you. My peace, he says. It's not how the world gives peace. It's because this old world doesn't know about peace. Oh, it knows about the problems of a world without peace. It's Jesus who comes to give us peace. This peace of Jesus that comes with his advent. It's the new Jerusalem coming down as we heard. It's present. It's present, but yet it's still coming. We know it in part now, but then we'll know it completely in fullness. We know His peace today because He's present to us as the Spirit comes to make the love of Jesus. We become what we behold. We look at our calendars and we can, we can see the priorities of our life. We, we look at our clocks and it, and it drives us from one urgent moment to the next. What we behold, what we see, what our, we turn our lives toward is what we become. And so, friend, let me ask you, what are you looking at? What are you beholding? Are you beholding only that which the world says is important, what the world is, says is really happening today, where we're consumed by the stuff of life, where it leads us into chaos, it leads us into despair and, and depression, it leads us into loneliness and the destruction of community and the destruction of relationship and the destruction of lives. It leads to death. Are you beholding what Jesus offers? Are you awake to His peace? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid, for I come to offer peace, He says. And so in these days of Advent, we're given this great gift by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit that comes and, and points to us, where is your hope? Where is your peace? Why? It is the peace of God found in Jesus Christ that awakens our souls to the greater realities, to the Kairos time that calms, calms our spirits, that settles our hearts and strengthens our hands. We who know this Kairos-based peace, see, we're the ones who then are called to proclaim in word and deed the very same to those who are walking in darkness, those who do not know. And so, friend, will you, will you begin to feel that stirring in your heart and stirring in your soul as the Holy Spirit works to make known the power and the presence of God and the love of Jesus Christ? Will you awaken to peace? Will you live in peace? And will you share this peace of Jesus with those you meet today? 
peace that's only Jesus gives. Friend, this is the work of Advent. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. We have a time to respond to God through prayer, and so I'd invite you to come with me now as we go before God in our prayer. My Heavenly Father, you are the God who gives us peace. Peace in Jesus. And so it is in this second week of Advent. We ask you to come and, and to cause us to, to remember that because of Jesus we can experience we can experience an Advent. We can experience a Christmas free from, from turmoil and chaos. Regardless of our circumstances, regardless of the situations we find ourselves in, you come to offer us the peace of your most holy presence, a peace that passes understanding. In that first Advent, in your first coming you sent your Son, you sent the One who's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Even the angels cried out, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom His favor rests. See, the angels, they, they know your purpose. They know the gifts of hope and peace and joy and love that, that were laid there in the manger. They recognize the fullness of God wrapped in the tiny flesh of an infant as you humbled yourself and came to us and dwelt among us, Emmanuel, God with us, and the baby Jesus. That baby would grow to be the very same God-man, that Jesus who would again humble himself to face death on a cruel cross, to redeem us from this old world to redeem us from all the brokenness, redeem us from all the ways that evil creates such chaos, the sin that separates us, that allows us only to think of ourselves and nothing else. He came, set us free. And it was there on the cross that He triumphantly defeated sin and death in order to cancel our debt, in order to reconcile to bring us back into relationship with you, most gracious Father. That's why you sent your Son, because you loved us. You, you sent that we might believe in Him, and believing in Him have life abundant, everlasting, eternal. That first Advent, first Christmas gift, it remains the only gift worth truly having. He ascended into heaven and sits there at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from, from whence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And so we know, we look forward to the second advent, the, the second coming, the day when, when he, and truly He's exalted above all names, where every knee in heaven and earth and under the earth must bow to the name of Jesus. We know this when he walked upon the earth that the winds and the waves obeyed him. And so it will be in the end that all creation will obey. For he rules and reigns as king over all. No situation, no circumstance we find ourselves is a match for this most holy king. The one who comes to make all things new. Lord, we are living in days of this old evil world, this old evil age, as Paul talked about it. And we long for the age to come. Lord, we're living in the middle of it. And we're at the beginning of the end, or in the middle of the beginning of the end, when this old world will pass away, and that which you want to come in completion and the fullness of time, when you want to establish your kingdom everywhere, and in all times, when that new Jerusalem comes, we long for that, Lord. What we long for is your presence. For we know that where you are, 
And you invite us to be in that, in your presence. That there we have peace. So Lord, we pray that you would help us. That Holy Spirit, you would awaken us to peace. That you would keep us in that perfect peace as, as we keep our minds on the truth of your powerful love as we contemplate how much you love us in Jesus. We thank you for your mighty and sovereign hand. And so help us, help us to trust fully in you, to rest in the peace that you offer. Lord, there are, there are many, many who grieve because of loss of life, loved ones who've gone on. There's a community in Oxford that's broken, broken by violence, unspeakable violence. There are people, Lord, locked up in prisons like Paul Whalen and Trevor Reed, missionaries in Haiti being held against their, by captors of all kinds, places in the world that are beset by disease and COVID and becomes exhausting, Lord, if all we have is our own resources. And so, Lord, for each of these and, and for those who who today are struggling with illness or cancer, that the, the places, Lord, that we need you to be peacefully present, we offer up through our prayers. Lord, be present and bring your peace. Lord, as we pray, we remember that model you gave to us. The disciples said, Lord, teach us. Teach us how to pray with the intimacy that you pray. And so you taught us a model. And so we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's been good to be with you and to spend this time in worship together. If you're ever in the area, here on the corner of M52 and Pleasant Lake, we hope that you'll stop in. If it's during the week, we're often at the office in our fellowship hall. If it's a Sunday, 1030, join us in person. We'd be, we'd be overjoyed to welcome you face to face. We're so thankful that God is present to us. And in his presence, we know the peace of Jesus. May the love of our Heavenly Father May the peace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forever. Amen and amen.